Jesus name let's give the Lord a hand clap amen we want to have a very quick Bible study was starting if we can a series of the unpredictable God the unpredictable God in Esther chapter 4 and verse 14 we see a declaration that was made by a man called Mordecai he said for all if thou all together holdest thy peace at this time then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jew from what? And not that place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? So it's very important that we begin to understand that God cannot be predicted. What makes God sovereign? what makes God dynamic is that you are too small to predict the ways of God you are too small to predict it's unpredictable we can do our best whatever you think you know about God now is the dimension that God revealed and permitted you to know whatever you think you know about God is the dimension the aspect, the style of heaven that God expounded and revealed to you. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 and verse 28, it says that the last phrase said, There is no searching to his understanding. Whenever you want to understand God in your human frailty, you will search and search and search and may die searching. So what Mordecai was saying to Esther, Esther, I need help from you. But I have worked with God enough to understand that even if you do not help me, help can come from somewhere else. In other words, I understand the unpredictability of God. The reason most of us are not enjoying what we should enjoy in God is that we try to confine God with the ideas of our mind. Amen. Amen. We try to confine God. And we try to figure God out. And that's one of the problems people have today. When we get to that assumption, even as Christians, where we think we know this God. Where you put yourself in trouble is whenever you think you know God. And you know, whenever people tend to, anybody you see today that becomes so careless in the things of God, is because they have gotten to a point in their life where they think they know God. Where they think they understand God. And today, in the body of Christ, in the church, one of the things we see in the church, which is almost a problem, is that when people tend to think they know so much about scripture, as a matter of fact, when you hear some people preaching, they will say, what that scripture actually says, they use that to water down the originality of the scripture. What that scripture actually says, so there's a problem. There are those who go from one extreme, and those who go to another extreme. There are those who add their emotion into the scripture. They add their emotion. Anybody who dies now and says it goes to heaven must come back and tell us don't wear earrings. So once they die, the revelation they see of God is dressing culture. Once they die, the revelation they see of God is dressing culture. So we see people who add emotion. The ones that don't add emotion become so careless. They remove the spirituality of the scripture. So you see two different extremes. Some will carry the scripture from its original context. They tell us that why would people wear trousers to church that is against scripture. There's no trouser in the Bible. There's no trouser in the Bible. There's nothing like that. And they quote Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. A man should not put on that 
which pertain to a woman a woman should not put on that which pertain to a man what pertain to a woman what pertain to a man no that's the truth there's no trouser there the reason we tell people not to wear certain things is for the sake of decency not because in scripture it's a sin it's not if you say that the bible was talking about men should wear trousers women should wear skirt why not you read the whole portion let me tell you how the bible works when you are studying the bible don't pick that verse read the preceding verse and read the successive verses you are looking at me like i'm okay deuteronomy this bible study right deuteronomy 22 verse 5 Deuteronomy 22 The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man Neither shall a man put on the woman's garment For all they that do so are abomination unto the Lord So what is that now? We are now saying that The men are not supposed to wear skirts Am I correct? Because in your mind that's what belongs to a woman eh? So a man should not wear skirt. Then a woman should not wear trousers That's what belongs to a man Okay read verse 30 Verse 30 a man shall not take his father's wife nor discover his father's skirt. You, you see, you see? But is it not the Bible we are reading? Eh, so, <laughs> so, how did I even get into this? What was I saying before? <laughs> No, but that's the truth because we don't understand that in those days, men were scared. You doubt it? First Samuel 15, 17. First Samuel 15, 17. First Samuel 15, 17. Go to verse 27. As Samuel turned about to go, he lay hold upon the skirt of his mantle. Prophet of God was wearing skirt. I'm not teaching that. I would have given you reference of scripture to see men. He wasn't talking about dressing. He was talking about culture. In the place where they were going to, the strange land where they were going to, there were homosexuals and lesbians. Men were sleeping with men. Women were sleeping with women. What God was telling them is that, please, what pertains to a man is a woman what pertains to a woman is a man do not it was a lifestyle it was a lifestyle it was a lifestyle because you remember that lifestyle began in the time of sodom and gomorrah when the angels came and the people said they wanted to have intercourse with the angels which were men hello so god was trying to talk about a culture not a dress code but so what i'm trying to say i got into this is that some people when they hold the bible they had their emotion just tell us that people should not wear earrings because you are not comfortable with it or because people are almost worshiping it god can give that as a personal revelation to you when jewelry is now taking the place of god in your life god will tell you stop wearing it but that is not a revelation for everybody there are some people the lord will tell them take away this earring because it is it is affecting your service to god are you following what i'm saying people there are people who wear rings they are preachers big rings in their hands i'm not i have nothing against it but there was a time when i was preaching I, will wear, I just loved it for fashion one time I was worshipping the Lord on the pulpit I felt like the heavens were closed I lifted up my hands I did everything, knelt down, lay on the ground did everything, I did feel the presence of God and I just said something was wrong so in the midst of the worship I took my ring off put it in my pocket, I felt the anointing common sense will tell me I shouldn't wear it again but the mistake I will make is if I now condemn somebody else who is wearing it that becomes a problem maturity maturity is the ability of you not to impose your personal dealing with God on a brother or a sister it becomes heresies when your personal dealing becomes a doctrine I don't even know I got it. I was saying something before I started saying this amen the unpredictable 
predictable God. God cannot be predicted. Whatever anyone will get from God, Jesus was speaking. I think John 3, is it 27? He said, nobody can receive anything except it is given to him by heaven. So when God wants to give you anything, when God wants to give a man anything, it has to come from heaven. We can understand that it comes from heaven, but how it comes is what we can predict. Hello? Once you become a child of God, you are the business of God. And that is why, have you studied your Bible? Anytime God tells the people to do something, when they do it, God does not clap for them. But the one he tells them not to do, that they do, he punish them. Alright? God told Adam, name the garden. Adam named the garden. God never applauded him. Do this, Adam did it. Do this. The only error of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, God amplified it. I asked myself a question, God, why did you not commend him for the others? And God began to tell me the way he thinks. The way God thinks is this. Let me show you how God thinks. When a sinner is living in sin, his sin is not God's business. His person is what is God's business. His sin. God is not interested. He's not bothered about his sin. God is bothered about his person. Because the reason he's sinning is because he's a sinner. That's his person. But when a believer is born again and transformed, God does not bother about his person. God bothers about his sin. Because being this person, he should not sin this sin. How do I explain? How do I explain this now? God, are you, are you getting something? When a sinner is sinning, he stole, he took somebody's money, he lied, he did this. God is not bothered about those things he's doing. God is bothered about his person. Because if his person can be transformed, he will not do those things. So God is his target is to transform him from old to a new person. So he stops that. But the believer, when he sins, God is not happy with his sin. Because being a transformed person, he should not do that sin. Do you get it now? That is why when a believer makes a mistake, God comes hard on him. God comes hard. Because being a new person, God does not respect that. So we must begin to understand how God operates. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. We must begin to understand how God operates. That we can't predict this God. All we have to do is to follow him. Mordecai knew that this God is unpredictable. No wonder David said in Psalm 121 from verse 1 that we look up to the hills. Not a particular hill. The hills because God is unpredictable. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2. We have foreseen that we are so greatly encompassed with great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us and run with patience the race that is set before us, looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and now is set on the right hand of majesty on high. So, God Almighty, Mordecai knew the strategy. On how to walk with God. That you cannot in your little mind predict God. Hallelujah. If you want to see the, the unpredictable nature of God. <laughs> you must understand God's approach to man. Now look at this. Look at this. How many of you love the Bible? Put your hand down. One day Jesus entered somewhere. And he saw a man in Mark chapter 2. That was incapacitated. The man couldn't move. And Jesus said to him, First, thy sins are forgiven. Can I ask you a question? A man that cannot move, how can he sin? No, even if he wants to sin, he can't move. <laughs> if he wants to go and fight somebody, he's so angry. If you, a man that is paralyzed and incapacitated, if you slap him, he can't respond. So we sin, did he sin? Where did this sin come from? And the man has been capacitated. Look at Bartimaeus. He was born blind. The first the Lord says that your sins are forgiven. What sin did... 
<laughs> Even if a blind man wants to sin, how can he sin? <laughs> Nobody's following. The <laughs> so when you say that God handles the issue of sin, what is what happens? God handles the nature of Adam in a person. Anytime God sees a person that's not regenerated, the first thing God Jesus remembers is the first Adam. Because every affliction comes through the first Adam. And until that issue is handled, healing, miracles, security, and all that cannot be in view. Mordecai said concerning the Lord, help can come from another place. Esther was like the only hope. The reason most times we do not see the manifestations and the favor of God is because we have boxed our mind to export. We have boxed our mind to export. The Bible says concerning Mordecai, number one, it says a certain Jew called Mordecai. So if you must see the unpredictable nature of God, you must be a firm and a rooted believer. Don't forget Romans 2 29. Say those that are Jew, we are Jew, not outwardly, but inwardly. You must be a firm and a rooted believer. A firm and a rooted believer. Now, before you become a firm and a rooted believer, you must first be a believer. Before being rooted and being firm, you must be a believer. Before being rooted and being firm. You must be what? A what? A believer. It doesn't matter if you act like a believer. If you are not a believer, you are not a believer. If you act like one, for example, how many of you, when we were in the university or the polytechnic, there used to be a group of people. They call them racketeers. They will tell you, I will give you admission. Have you, you remember those people? They will collect money from you that they will help you to get to school. Eh? And you, you will give them money because you believe. In fact, it gets so bad, they will tell you that your name is a supplementary list. Go and start taking lectures. So you go and sit down in class. You will take lecture. I remember a young man who was in school. He was in the department of law. They kept telling him. He didn't see his name one day. He got to 200 level. No result. Nothing. He just kept following, following. Now, how many of you know that it can be there for five years? Are you following me? He can be in class for five years. Follow everybody. No problem. He has no contract with the school. The school does not owe him anything. At the end of the day. Now, that does not stop. In fact, he can be more dedicated than even those that had admission. He can read more than them. That is what happens. When you are not a Christian, but you are in church. You have not been given. You have not been admitted into the family of God. But you come, you clap, you do everything. At the end of 20 years, it was a waste. Why? Because the contract, the contract you have with the school is that admission. It's like somebody in a company. They come here, you just like the company, you like the way they act. You are not employed, you just like the company. You're passing at this company, I just like the company. You got there, you started working. You started working. You work so hard. In fact, you can even work more tedious and more, you know, sacrificial than even those who got the employment letter. When it's time for salary, they will tell you, we thought you were a volunteer. We thought you just volunteered. You like what is going on here. So first of all, before being rooted, you must first of all be what? A believer. What does it take to be a believer? Many of us have not had that experience. Of what it takes to be a believer. What we are told about being a believer is we have to be very serious with a God that we don't know. Don't play with church. And our parents brought it. Go to church. Go to church. They never sat us down to say, Come, this God, this is who He is. You won't go to church. You are at home. Get dressed. Go to church. If I if I leave this house before you. So when they bully the people to church like that, they get to church and when they are sitting, they go outside because there's no encounter with God. Hallelujah. Once you become a believer, you have entered a new kingdom. A believer is one 
who has turned from his old ways of life one who has gotten an encounter who live by the dictates and control of the Holy Spirit who is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is God the Father without barriers God the Father does not confine to the four walls of an apartment when your life is dictated when God becomes your consciousness do you know there are people that do things there are people that how do I say this now how do I say this everything we do in life the first person the first person we must consider is God how does he feel about it are you following what I'm saying how does he feel about it if I do this to this person what will God feel about it look at Joseph Joseph, Potiphar's wife was with Joseph, Joseph said something he said your husband has given me everything your husband has given me everything in this house there is nobody greater than I the only restriction is you now he's not even at home I could do it and get away with it but there is a problem how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God it is God my fear is how will God take it so when sometimes you are about to hurt people even when you, are, you have the power to do that even when they can do nothing to you God even when they deserve it there are people that deserve it God somebody was preaching and made a reference to something I said and finished pieces to me and I heard I didn't watch it but I heard about it hey! and this is somebody that he, he says a lot of wrong things that I know plenty and I say hey <laughs> let the show begin <laughs> say, this, say you want to blast no problem I said to, so I got that four or five things he said which were very wrong scripturally and I prepared to respond in such a way that when I finish and God has given such a grace that when I finish you can't talk no matter what any matter anything going on when I put my mouth on it I know how to kill it you can't talk so I have finished I had already planned and I was praying to come to church that morning and the Holy Spirit said to me take your pen I took my pen he said cancel this <laughs> I said, eh? he said cancel this cancel that I canceled there were two left so those two are still enough to do anything when I got into the car the Lord said to me I speak to matured in parable if you are expecting me to be pointing off for you to cancel you are a baby the fact that I said cancel this too means you should cancel all <laughs> hey! I said oh so this man would think his mouth is sharp now <laughs> this man would think oh when <laughs> after service I preached in the midst of the message it flashed my mind the devil said you know some of you have got to a point where the devil doesn't talk to you I don't want to be like you because you are a real believer the devil must talk to you there are people that the devil doesn't talk to them anymore they are so holy the devil doesn't talk to them Jesus in the midst of 40 days fasting Satan spoke to him there's a difference between obeying the devil obeying the voice of the devil some people say that doesn't talk to them they say no 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 Satan doesn't talk to me we have to check you very well <laughs> the devil came in the midst of the message
message on the altar. See where Satan came. Altar. He said, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire him. <laughs> Fire him. And I, I, I managed to control. When I got back, I just was in the office. The Lord asked me a question. And this is where I am going. This is where I am going. The Lord asked me a question. He said, There are three parties in there that rules this world that, that matter to life God, man, Satan. Whenever you are doing anything, first of all, how would God feel? Number two, how will it affect the fate of people? Are you listening to what I'm saying? And the Lord said to me, now he has said this, people are not stupid. You come, you say yours. It's like two ministers are fighting. Then that person that just got born again now sees that as a standard. That in Christianity, we fight ourselves. And the Lord asked me, this thing that has been said now, did it reduce you? I said, no. Did it kill you? I said, no. Are you still you? I said, yes. Did it take anything from you? I said, no. He said, forget it. Now, now, you must get to that point in your life. We have flesh. That is what it takes to be a believer. Flesh is not skin. Flesh is not skin. Flesh is the spirit that wants you to fulfill the desires of the devil. That, that intuition that wants you to dance to the tune. I don't know if anybody is getting anything at all. Let me not digress from what I'm sharing. If you are saved, be rooted. Stop waving. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, verse 14, James 1, 6, there are people who wave, they are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Today, somebody just come, ah, tight is not of God. Hey, tight is not of God. Ah, I'm not paying tight again. Tomorrow, somebody say, Peter, ah, who's we'll stop paying everything because you are not firm with the word. Somebody told me, he said, he said, he said, um, explain to me about tight. And I said to him, I said, I'm not going to explain to you about tight. Let me just give you one counsel. The fact that God said it, do it. I many of you know that I put that would tell you that baptism, baptism is not important. You can go to heaven without being baptized. Eh? It has become a doctrine. Some say do it, some say don't do it. The fact that Jesus said it at all, do it. The fact it came from the mouth and the lips of Christ, do it. Every wave to and fro. The last time you are, you are covering your hair to church, you enter the place, people don't cover their hair. You don't have a personal lead not to do that. You too, you took off your scarf. You are supposed your hair. Can you see you are not you are, you are not firm? Tomorrow, if you enter where they cover hair again, you look everybody there. You cover your hair. <laughs> you know the Holy Spirit has told you to drop jewelries. God told you. Drop necklace. Drop this. You drop it. You enter somewhere, everybody's wearing jewelry. Eh. You went back and carried your old jewelry. <laughs> I wish I was communicating now. <laughs> One of the signs to know a believer who is rooted is consistent growth. Consistent growth. Ephesians 4.15 says, speaking the truth in love that we may grow. First Peter 2 2 said, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. The word of God is the only authentic ingredient for your growth. It's the only authentic ingredient. The word of God is the only substance for your growth. Am I communicating? 
I was telling us on spiritual growth and I told us one of the biggest problems in the church is that people don't grow. Even those who grow, they grow in the wrong places. What is cancer? Cancer is abnormal growth. When growth starts developing in wrong areas of the body, it's what? It's cancerous. There are many believers, they don't grow. They only grow in evil things. They grow in malice. You are not growing in prayer, you are not growing in fasting. You are growing in gossip. Before you came to church, you talk with break. But now, once you start, no break. You just go on and on. So God expects us to be rooted, be firm. Be a believer that is not easily moved. The Bible says, always abounding in the work of God. Be unmovable. Praise the Lord. It was a setting Jew. The unpredictability of God is open to firm believers. Mordecai was a certain. For the word certain means somebody who was assuredly sure. Somebody who was convinced. Who was grounded. And I, I was talking to somebody over the phone. And I was saying, see. I have discovered that Christianity now has nothing to do with longevity or length of how long you have been in church. Christianity is how open you are ready to learn and how hungry you are. Somebody can be in church for 30 years, he's still battling with smoking. And somebody two years in the work with God has grown. Someone else can be a believer and he focuses on media. That is where his faith is on. That's what controls his life. He begins to think like them. Act like them. But someone else is addicted to the Bible. Yet he's a young baby. He's like a man called Apollos. Apollos, all Apollos knew was the baptism of John. That's all Apollos knew. If you come to call, call Apollos to a Bible study. The first thing he said that today. We are studying the baptism of John. And he will elaborate on it. You call him to vigil. Let's welcome brother Apollos. He comes to, today. We are studying the baptism of John. He will give it intensely. Sunday service. Let's call brother Apollos to give us a charge. Today. We are studying the baptism of John. It became a concern to people. Aquila and Priscilla now carried him. <laughs> and say, aside the baptism of John, there are other things in the Bible. <laughs> He said, eh? that's all he knew. But he knew it well. He stood on what he knew and knew it well. And he ran with it. He pursued it. He was identified with that message. One of the poor, like I said, the authentic English from growth is the word of God. As you grow in God's word, you grow in faith. As you grow in God's word, you grow in grace as the word of God prescribes to us in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Your addiction to the word of God is what opens you up to connectivity with divinity. Your addiction, how addicted you are. Now, addiction to the word of God is not just reading the word of God. It's applying the word of God that you studied. You apply it to your life. Your addiction. Your daily addiction. The Bible says your word has become meat to me. He said I, reg I, I regard thy word as my necessary food. That's what Job said. As you begin to study his word. You start knowing how to create your own world. When God was to create the word. He spoke something. So to create your own world, you must go to the word of God that created this world so you can create your own. Psalm 36 verse 9 Say with thee, O Lord, is the fountain of life. For in thy light shall we see light. In his light you see your own light. It's like lining up. When you are driving, you line up with a man who has full his headlight, the illuminations are bright. And you have your car, your car has issues. Your headlight is not functioning. Maybe one of them is blurry. The other is totally out. If you are wise enough, you just line up behind the man who has full headlight. You just keep following him. That's 
that's what the word of God is. It's a compass to us. The Bible says it's a, it's a lamp to what? A lamp to what? A light. So the word of God is broken down to two dimensions. Lamp to feet, light to part. What, have you seen a lamp? What is, the, what is the effectiveness of a lamp? A lamp only shows you the immediate surrounding. Okay? A lamp shows you what? Immediate. With the lamp in your hand, you can't see what is far. You only see what is close. It means that when you need to understand how to handle issues of immediate importance, you need the word. It's a lamp to your feet. What does the light do? A light gives us illumination long distance. When you need to know where you are going also, you need the word as a light to your path. But until it becomes a lamp to your feet first, it can be a light to your path. If the word of God cannot help you, if the word of God cannot help you in handling immediate situations, it cannot help you to handle your tomorrow. That was what David said. I have killed the lion and the bear. I can handle Goliath. What you are able to handle when no one is watching you is what determines what you can handle when everybody is watching. When Goliath came up, everyone was watching. When the lion was there, the bear was there, nobody was watching. Am I communicating here? So it's very important that, first of all, many of us want the word of God to be a light to our path when it has not been a lamp to our feet. The immediate things you should correct by reason of your obeying the word of God, you have not corrected it. And yet you are thinking that you have a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be rooted. I receive the grace to be rooted, to be firm, to be addicted, to be addicted to the word of God. I receive the grace to be addicted to the word of God. You see, in your life, one of the things God hates, okay, you know, the reason why God said to Adam, he said, do not eat of the tree of what? Knowledge of good and evil. The singular reason is because God hates mixture. If you are not, if you are tree of knowledge of good, be tree of knowledge of good. If you are tree of knowledge of evil, be tree of knowledge of evil. Don't be mixed so we don't know what tree you are. Adam, I do not want pollution. I don't want mixture. I don't want contamination. Don't go there. Alright? Okay. How many of you have had this question before? That if God knew that Adam was going to fall, why did he put the tree there? Have you had that question? Okay, wait, wait. How many of you have asked yourself that question before? Don't lie now. Okay, put it down. That God knew. If we say God knows everything, <laughs> He already. You see that you are, you are analyzing Bible like, poli like a politician. <laughs> you know, some people think that Bible is to be a good student of the Bible is when you were in secondary school and you pass here, okay, and they started calling you pastor. <laughs> they don't, there's a spirit let me explain that to you what makes God God is that he can do anything that's what makes him God he can do anything he's capable of doing anything he has no restriction what makes you man is that you must have restriction didn't have the tree of knowledge of good and evil to restrict him. Adam would have been God. Would have been God. He can do anything he likes. He can enter anywhere. He can become. That is why, no matter how blessed a man is, even if God lifts a man, you must see a restriction. Joseph! Pharaoh said, this palace is yours. In fact, by your word shall the people be ruled. Take my ring. Take my daughter. But only on the throne will I be greater than you. 
that's to still prove to you that you must have restriction God was trying to initiate to Adam that Adam so long you are a man you don't have license to do what you want this is what makes me higher than you hello this is what makes me higher than so that's why God put the restriction so God hates mixture how do you handle mixture is the word of God Hebrews 4 12 the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any twedged sword piercing to what of the of what is piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit hold on of the joints and what is going on surgery of the joints and marrows and it's a discerner the word of god can enter your spirit so much and can control your thinking it is what you put into your mind that controls your thoughts if you spend the whole day watching movie now many of you know there's a way you can watch a horror movie and get a bad dream it's not an attack of the devil it is a procession of the mind that is why if you are a person who is controlled by dreams you might be in bondage but the bible says in ecclesiastes that a dream can come through multitude of business there's a way you can position your eye on a sister in church continually you will see her in the dream as your wife no that's that's the truth so i do not listen to somebody say, i saw in the dream no that's not that, that that doesn't mean nothing dream is not a true test of marital confirmation there are dreams that come by multitude of business there are dreams that come by fever there are dreams that are hunger induced okay so why now listen to this what if if what you put more into your mind is the word of god you start thinking the word of god if what you put more there are people that spend more time on their phones even if you are spending time on your phone everything should be god related or else it begins to control your thinking pattern control and what controls your thought controls your actions and what controls your actions controls your habits and what controls your habits controls your destiny actions when they become habits controls destiny when a person is loading himself with the word of God all the time, all the time, you start thinking the word. You start acting the word. Hello? You start thinking the word. You start doing what? Acting the word. Your mind is, is filled with the word of God. Because that is all you put in your spirit. You wake up in the morning, the first thing you are listening to is a worship song. Not you grab your phone as if you have, you have a problem with somebody in your dream. You wake up, the first thing is a worship song. That's what enters into your spirit. You see, the first thing that enters and the last thing you do controls the whole day. Oh. Let me close now. In your life, two things are important. The first thing you do and the last thing you do. Let me give you an example. Do you know why the children of Israel were afraid? Goliath knew the secret. The Bible says it comes every morning and evening. When they wake up, the first person they see is Goliath. When they are going to bed, the last person they see is Goliath. So he controls their sleep, controls their day. It was a strategy. It doesn't come in the noon. It comes in the morning and it comes at night. Have you seen people when they wake up, they see something bad say, what, what, what kind of rubbish why have you spoiled my day so you have just spoiled because they know that what happens first so you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is to carry your phone rather than visiting the throne so you wake up in the morning a song even if it's going to come from your phone it has to be a worship not going to be looking for what's not looking for you you get a worship, you just worship God, worship God, worship God. What take that song in your spirit, man? Sort out your knees and pray. Study the word of God. Just meditate. Take a pen. Write out the things for the day. Then you can now do what you want to do. You have subdued the day. You have taken control over the day. That's what the Bible calls commanding the morning. You have commanded the morning. 
am i speaking to somebody here you have commanded wealth from the four corners of the earth you command prosperity you command increase you command finances that money comes to me today money comes to me i, I become i become recognized on earth hallelujah every believer to be recognized on earth you need a level of financial power how many of you know everybody on earth has a voice but money gives you volume everybody has a voice but money gives you volume when you are poor nobody hears your voice when money comes your voice is loud so money gives you volume when everybody okay let's go to the next point <laughs> let's go to the next point somebody say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be rooted to be addicted to the word of God number two one of the things we saw in the life of Mordecai was when people were conspiring to kill the king Mordecai exposed them we are seeing what opened him up to the unpredictability of God was number two he did not support wickedness if you must see a dimension of God that's beyond your dream that is not tied to a person that nobody will take glory of you must be a person that don't support wickedness the Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 24 he that saith to the wicked thou art righteous he said him shall the people curse nations shall abhor him when you see wickedness and you are trying to elevate it the Bible says there is a curse don't support I preached a message some time ago only the lawless praise the wicked only the lawless somebody is abroad she's a young girl she has no visible job that you can see that she's doing and she's building a house and you are clapping for her in fact you are putting on your, on your dp as your role model your role model is somebody who has no visible job your role model is somebody who is abroad and how she gets money is not visible nobody knows your role model is somebody who is an internet fraudster you are clapping for him and you may not even clap for him you may collect from him whatever you do not resist you have assisted you know somebody i know parents today when they know their son or their daughter gets money illicitly illegally they won't collect it they won't collect it they won't collect it my father said to me he's, he's seated now in the bible study he said when I gave my life to Jesus, I was watching you. There are things I saw that blew my mind. He began to give me, there was, there was somebody who met him one time and said he wanted to talk to me. He was to bring the person to come and see me after service. Then in the midst of the service, I walked to the person by the spirit and everything the person had told him. And that was the person's first time of entering the church. He had to go back to the person and say, who did you discuss with? He said, as you are looking at me, that's how I'm looking at you. I didn't tell anybody he kept that one in his mind my father he wanted to be sure that this son is following is real he kept it somebody was sick and all of that they took them somewhere the person came was healed he kept it and one day he told me say my son if you were fake i would have been the one carrying megaphone <laughs> to be announcing to the world that please so oh, help oh <laughs> hallelujah he said but some things I have seen I'm like oh this thing is real <laughs> so what I'm saying what I'm saying in nutshell you cannot sit where people are running down people and you say I just kept quiet you are part of it you are part of it If anybody calls you on the phone and says somebody told me this about you and narrates a five minutes detail or deal please avoid that person for people to talk to you nastily about somebody for five minutes is because they found you comfortable they found you comfortable there are things that I, I, I don't get patience to be told one of my sons in the ministry a, a great man of God called me a man of a great God there's no great man of God we are all men of a great God 
and he called me and was, he said he wants to talk to me about that son I said okay he said, he said, you see you just have to be careful and I said stop he said what I said don't tell me he said but I said don't I've known this young man for 8 years as a son he lives wherever he stays in Abuja and will drive to Auchi to attend service have you ever given him money for fuel were you there all the sacrifices he has paid to be a son were you there so I should listen to you against him when you were not there when both of us met I said please sir don't call me again now is the young man perfect no that is why God brought him there's, there's something some of you don't know when there are people you see their life and there are things you are not happy about it is a prayer point for you you can only judge me if you are perfect once you become perfect judge anybody so long you are not perfect keep quiet so uh, whatever you see that is wrong the people were planning how to kill the king Mordecai was there the king was to be killed Mordecai said no 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 I can't be part of this what has this man done you kill him he said no king this is what is being planned I will not be a part of it so long you were there God planted you there to react and rebel against that wickedness you can't be in an office where they are collecting bribe and it means you say no me no so long I don't offend God you see how selfish you are so long me I didn't offend God but the people around you are offending men I don't know how to explain this to you after you after you avoid offending offending God you must be careful not to offend man oh Lord when the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 when he returned back to his father's house on his way he realized what he was going to say he said I have sinned against and before am I talking to somebody here that, well, me so long so long I'm not part of it I didn't offend God but the people are offending men that should concern you anything you don't resist you have assisted Ephesians 5 11 says I have no fellowship with the unfruitful words of darkness but rather reprove them I have no fellowship only the lawless praise the wicked only the lawless Proverbs 17 15 he that justified the wicked and condemned the righteous God said there's, a, there's a, a, a reward a repercussion for him in fact it says in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 23 to 24 Isaiah 5 23 to 24 I don't know why the, the scriptures are not working on the screen which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him look at what God says about them verse 24 therefore as the fire devoured the stubble the flame consumed the chaff so shall their roots be as rottenness and their, and their blossom shall go as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel you can't be around wickedness people a young boys are planning what to do to a lady you are there you say because you are not part of it you will not spoil the plan it's your duty to frustrate that plan that's why you are a child of God that's why you are a light in the midst of darkness am I talking to somebody here that's why you are light in the midst of darkness you are a fellow lecturer another lecturer is victimizing a student that has become your personal fight to make sure such a thing doesn't happen around you only the lawless praise the wicked you want to see the unpredictability of God never see wickedness and keep quiet about it you are in a place where people are, are, are practicing all forms of evil they are swindling in the office you have a boss in the office that they are swindling him they are playing him duping him Christianity of these days needs to be re-examined. In the 90s and the 80s, if you are looking for a sensitive position, you will enter a church. 
if you want to give the post of an accountant you will look for a born again now that word born again is old fashioned we just ask are you a Christian before they will ask you are you born again now that word born again has become old fashioned now we don't even talk about born again we just, are you a Christian which church should they go am I correct so are you a Christian so yeah, yeah. Which, which church we are more interested in that than that born again experience then when somebody says born again you will give the person your money to keep one penny say somebody is born again that, that we can entrust but today when somebody says he's a Christian and he's in church with you you, 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 are, you are careful you are, no, you are careful these days when people steal bible word of God word of God you stole it you are studying the word of God that you stole <laughs> people still have you not seen people drop their bible on the seat they don't meet it somebody stole the word of God the word of God <laughs> the word of God that said thou shalt not steal was stolen <laughs> steal Bible forget about phones forget about handsets that one if people are charging their phones somewhere in church they have to sit down people have become so hardened so hardened <laughs> oh Lord may God take us back to those days I remember one time where the manager of a bank in this town called me to appreciate me for a customer to appreciate me we are by a year old off the trust bank then they overpaid the girl she was a student they overpaid her bundles of money almost 180,000 what she came to collect was about 6,000 180 she had left she turned back she was trying to talk to the girl she said don't disturb me don't disturb me the girl on the counter have I not paid you go go he said, let me show you don't she went to the manager's office and said, I don't know why they gave me this money. Oh. I'm talking to her. She's not listening. The man stood up. You brought it back. He says, it's not my own. He came, shouted on that person. He said, are you a Christian? Say yes. What church do you attend? Give me your pastor's number. Called me to thank me. Today, somebody is paid 180000 extra. Miracle money. <laughs> he will say, it's what? miracle money that is robbery that is robbery it's not your money return it that's stealing that's not your money that's not Christianity that's not favor when God favors you he does not do it at somebody's expense the favor of God on you should not make somebody cry nobody's follow what I'm saying the favor of God upon you should not make somebody here start crying the favor of God on you should not make somebody lose his job. The favor of God on you should not make an account imbalance. But today, things have changed. Things have changed. The lawless praise the wicked. Let me not get into some things. Hello. Mordecai, I say I can't be a part of this. This king has done nothing to us. This king has fed us. This king has sheltered us. And the only way we can pay him is to plan his debt. I will not be a part of it. I will not be a part of it. My conscience is alive. Even if I don't hear the voice of God, I hear the voice of conscience. That this person has been a blessing. I cannot be a part of this. We all stay in the past. Who were those conspiring against the king? His own servants. His own servants. But the guy said, I cannot be a part of this. And he exposed them. And guess what? When he exposed them, there was no reward. We expected the man who preserved the life of a king should be elevated. There was no reward. And it was deliberate. Because when God wants to give you something ultimately, he doesn't give you immediately. <laughs> If they had rewarded him, they would just make him maybe from the gate to a gardener. God waited for a strategic time 
when the good he has done before will be needed it's like it's like joseph joseph told the butler you see when you get favored and your dream is interpreted remember me the bible says, and god made the butler he said not no the word the bible used the butler forgot not forgot sir forgot forgot the butler forgot to forget is manageable <laughs> but to forget To forget is not to remember. But to forget is not to be not to re, not to remember rest to power hundred. <laughs> he said the, he, for, in other words, he was not in the scheme. Genesis 30. I was trying to pick that. I was trying to pick that. Genesis 30, 23. He said, but the butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot. Not forgot. That was not a slang. Oh. It was not a slang. It was a deep statement that there was no plan for him to be remembered. <laughs> he forgot. Some people have forgotten and some are... <laughs> the butler forgot. God had a plan. God would strategically position your good works and wait for a time when it will bring relevant value so when you do not see an immediate reward for doing good don't be tired when you don't see an immediate reward for doing the right thing please just know that what god is doing is accumulating your reward and when it comes 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 no matter the good you have done you are not foolish you are not stupid you are not stupid you are not stupid some people will say you are not smart they are smart their smartness cannot take them far with all the smartness they get stranded but you are walking with principle keep doing the right thing a time is going to come that the people that called you stupid will start looking up to you be on your feet everybody When I was loving the Archbishop, I loved the Archbishop in Daosa. Loved him. You know, let me tell you what happens then. When we come to church, myself and one of the pastors, you know, in that ministry, we're talking on the phone this afternoon. He said, Ah, Apostle. I said, What is it? He said, If I see your life, I just see, I just remember those days we were youths. He said, We are coming to church every Sunday. We must read one something, one paper. I remember then when they listed the names of those in Ogboni fraternity. They listed one man number one they put the abishop that was a number two number two the thing was everywhere pastors they're carrying it to their altar say god has exposed you are stupid you're not you're not smart god is the one judging god does not judge his servants publicly any act of intimidating servants of god publicly is the devil at work that's not god i can show you from scripture that's not god that's a marine attack God never does that. I can show you from scriptures. God never does that. So, we just come like that. I remember that day I went to church. I was down. I bent my head. Now, I wasn't bending my head because of what was written. I was bending my head on how he would be feeling. I was more worried about saying, how is this man feeling? I was crying. Why are they doing this? Because I was in that program in Benin, a school called Howaba Primary School, when he was preaching and was talking about people of darkness, that they do their things in dark. He told the woman, he said, losing what do you use in Thai children? You know, ghetto. Is it ghetto? Or ja? It's ghetto. So a woman losing it, and he said, Your bony people, he said they cover their face. He was doing an illustration. Somebody snapped him. That was what was what on front. I know I was in that program. But you know, there are people you can't convince them that you know. Keep quiet. Because keep quiet. People I slapped, the one I punched, the one I did. And you know, when some people start talking, nasty things. 
but why, why will you stand why I, I, I believe us not to suffer there's a difference between persecution and confrontations the bible says contend for the faith when logic is at work in the minds of people when logic is at work in the mind of people they try to apply logic on spirituality it, I, I'm there, it's, it's very annoying when I see some things happen I'm trying to catch the face of a brother he's not here so I will not say it if he was here I would have, I would have said what he did if I said behind him that's gossip amen how people there are some things you there are some things you must you must be rooted in the word of god don't interpret scripture to suit you can i say this to you the day those killing christians in the north knew that christians were ready to face them kill is reduced kill is reduced persecution that people put on their neck and they cut it off cut it off cut it off that was satan taking advantage of the patience of the church why didn't elijah come down from the mountain surrender himself he surrender, surrender himself he should just surrender himself now because he's, he's, he should be ready to be persecuted when they knew that christians were ready for them when they were killing people in the, in, in the north then the, the, the god's servant bishop Eriko, went to the archbishop and said they are killing people they are killing people in the, and the archbishop asked him what are your youths there for he said the bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive go and give and god's servant bishop told all the members said come to church with cutlass he anointed it warn you you come here everybody said became correct members were protected so you must understand <laughs> the bible said when nehemiah was building he was building with two hands one hand block one hand sword you stand against building i cut your head he was building with two hands this is not it's not incitement to violence it's not incitement to violence there's a consciousness on not taking nonsense from the devil i can give you scriptures back to back to see when paul reacted at brethren when paul he released